Hi there, welcome back. This is the second video on the restoration of the Vega Harold K tube radio. And uh, where I left off last time, I was going to sort out that transformer, which was pretty precariously wired, to say the least. And here we have it. I uh, cleaned up the contacts on the replacement transformer. I also made them connect to the one side of the uh, tag strip that was basically empty. This is to make the connection a lot easier. So I have exactly the same connections that I had in the, in the crocodile clip craze that I had before. And I put it through some heat shrink and it's all going to their to the respective places. So that's all fine and good. The other thing is, you'll notice here, I've added a uh, silicon bridge rectifier. I did not use that small one. That small one, quite frankly, seemed just a little too fragile for my taste. So that's in place there, very well connected and it fits quite nicely. I've left the original one on top, just for the aesthetics, and uh, cut all the wires down below. The other thing I did was put in the capacitors. Now, I had a choice of uh, stuffing, restuffing this one or putting in a the capacitors underneath. And I judged that the space underneath was a little too crowded. So I decided to restuff that capacitor. I've done this before. I've shown it in a video. I'll link that above. And the result is aesthetically, you can't tell that there's any difference. However, it's got two brand new 47 microfarads at 450 volts capacitors in there. The two that I showed you, those Nishikons with 350 volts, and they're also a little bit bigger. So I couldn't fit them in there. Now the ones I fit in here were actually fitted on top of each other with great care to make sure the leads don't uh, short. And um, this is the result. I've tested it. I've done exactly the same test now as I did in the previous video, and the result is exactly the same. So that's all working. So the next stage is I'm going to get on to looking at the uh, front end on, at the RF section, replacing capacitors, and see what result we get if we get any reception. Because at the moment, it's giving us absolutely nothing. It could be the tubes, those two tubes in there, and it also could be just capacitors. So a lot of cleaning needs to be done, but uh, first step is replace caps and then do a test and hopefully have some joy. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna do another test now. I've recapped everything, everything that needed recapping, and I've actually done a test and we've got a bit of a quirk here. Got it on medium wave, dim bulb is on, maximum restriction, switch it on. Get the speaker over here, it's drawing 60 milliamps at the moment. Do we have any life? Yep, we've got something. We've got the mini whip at the back, the antenna. And I've got nothing till I do what did I do? This bulb is flickering. It's not properly connected. Let's give it a bit more juice. It's making a strange noise. A little while ago, when I did this, it was making a difference. It's picking up, and it stops. Picks up, stops. So there's something wrong with the tuning condenser. Here we go. Suddenly woke up. And then it goes to sleep again when you lift that up. So it is picking up. Here's our Madeiran station. Let's try shortwave. Mm 
So, that's completely dead. Stops. It's like the oscillator is going on and off. And there it's completely off. I think the capacitor is shorting inside there. sort of wakes up. And then it receives very strongly. But watch this. Dead. So it looks like we've got um, the capacitor shorting out in there. And otherwise it seems to be okay. So I have to open that up and see what we find. That's never a good thing. But has to be done. Just so you know, you can actually take this lid off. There's a little indent over there and on the other side you put in a little screwdriver, just twist it slightly and boom, it's out. Which makes it a hell of a lot easier than um, taking the whole cap out. Now having a look at this, I don't see anything too obvious, but something is definitely stopping the oscillator. There could also be a bad contact in there, so I need to clean those and see if we get any difference. Let me try that. Hopefully it's just a bad contact. I've had a really careful look at this and I don't see anything touching. It's not just the negative uh, contact. So there's definitely something wrong with uh, one side of these. Now one side is the front end tuning, the other side is the oscillator. I'm not sure which is which at the moment and I don't know which one has got something wrong with it but it's shorting at some point. And how do we determine that? Well, I wanted to see if the oscillator is working. So the best way to do that is actually to use a scope. I made up this little coil. All it is is a coaxial cable, a few turns on there, and the other side has got a BNC connector, which I can connect to a, um, an extension that goes to the scope. Now, if we look at the scope, and if I take this and I wave it around where the coils are, I can do it on the underside, but fortunately I found I can do it on the top side of this one, right about here. And I can move it around and see where it gives me the best signal. If I wave it around in that general vicinity, this is what I get. And I find the spot and I just leave this thing lying there. That's a good one. And what I find here is I'm looking at the frequency and it's giving me 1.76 megahertz. And as I turn this, the frequency is changing. So that's the oscillator working. And if I go up further, there's no antenna here. I just want to see the oscillator. If I go up any further, it just stops. That's about halfway across the dial. That's where the reception just dies. Now that's happening on medium wave. Now if I put it on short wave, it does that. So now it's giving me 3.7. That's short wave 1.58 to 2.2 to 5 .2 megs. If I go up further, still get it even further. That's 9.6 megs. But as you can see, whichever one I use, well, you haven't seen it yet, but if I go beyond a certain point, the oscillator starts dying. There, it's just dead. And that means that the oscillator capacitor is shorting. And I cannot, for the life of me, that's at, holy hell, that's 10 megahertz. And it's going down and it's going up. 
this um, capacitors kaput. So what do I do now? What do I do now? Well, I've already found one output transformer that was dead and I managed to replace it because fortunately I'm a hoarder. I don't throw these things away. What am I going to do now? Well, I have one of these. I've got a tuning cap that I removed from the same parts radio and it doesn't actually fit exactly the same, but I'm sure if I take this off, I'll get access to the main shaft. And I've checked, there's no shorts on here. Basically, we need four um, wires coming from here. There's that grounding or the, uh, the rotor that's connected to the rotor at the top there. And there's a bottom one that's connected to the stator. And the same with the side, rotor stator. Now, the one thing that concerned me is those two over there in the existing radio seem to be pretty equal. They, they seem to be exactly the same capacitors in terms of capacitance, in terms of size. And capacitors do have to do a lot to do with size and separation of the plates and so on. They seem to be exactly the same. And this one doesn't. This one's bigger than that one. But what is important is the capacitance and the tracking. So let's measure this and see what we get. I've done it and it was a bit of a surprise. Let me show you. I've got the, um, the DE5000 connected across the small one, one in the front. And we've got 398 or 400 nano picofarads. If I go down, or rather if I, go, if I close the capacitor more, I've got 516 picofarads. And if I open it, I get less and less and less because there are more or fewer plates or few fewer at a smaller part of the plates that are actually parallel to each other. 14 picofarads a minimum. Now, if I put it on the other one, exactly the same. It's still fully opened. Uh, 9.7, okay. Fully opened. Actually, it's 19. Now, I start closing them. Look what happens when you get to the top. 523. These two capacitors are bloody well near identical. If I take it to a, about halfway, stop there. 103 picofarads, and I change it to the other one. Try not to mess with too much. Hundred and two. Is that right? Bloody hell. Let's try there. Give it some time. 220. 219. Okay, let me move these across. Two twenty two. That is as near as damn it, exactly the same value. And the tracking is brilliant, which means I can use this capacitor in there. Damn, I'm glad I'm a hoarder. The challenge is taking it out of there. <laughs> That's not going to be fun. Well, but I've got to do it. So I'm going to unsolder those wires and I've got to make sure I put it in exactly the same and I've got to find a way, see if this thing can bolt to the chassis exactly like the other one does. I think it does actually. Let me get on with it. Well, the uh, transplant has been done and it actually worked very, very well. The uh, two, what is it, the stator connections come out exactly where the other one came out. The rotors are actually on the other side. So I took them underneath and uh, put a patch on there. You'll also notice that some cleaning has been done. Obviously, I couldn't lose the opportunity of being able to get under there. And um, <laughs> I, I really don't like the cleaning. So what I do is, as I'm restoring a section of the radio, I clean that part and bit by bit I get to the end and the whole thing's done. It's, it doesn't feel that bad. Switched on the radio, it's warming up. It's on the short wave 1, which is 18.8 .8 to 22 megahertz. Ah. Bible. 
I'm just moving the uh, little coil around to see where I get a better indication of the signal. Seems to be over there. I'm at the top end of the scale, which, as you remember, before had nothing. Oscillators working very well. That's at about 11 megahertz, 11.5 megahertz. It's picking up very well. Let's look at the other end of the scale. The very top end, not getting much at this time of day. That's around uh, 22 megahertz, 21. Let's change the channel to 2. That's uh, 5 to 12.2 megahertz. We're at the moment at the top end. Going into this weekend, we're more than happy with the, the roster and the players and the squad. This is amazing. Thank you. 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 Thank this is bloody good reception. Again, I'm using the mini whip antenna. Let's go to 49 meter band. Wave three, we normally don't get much. That's the lower frequencies. A lot of this computer noise. What we're getting here is probably just the bottom end of the next shortwave band. It's a 25 meter band. Let's put it on medium wave. The uh, coil slipped. Get it where it's not pick something up. That's the Portuguese channel. You go up further. This is bloody good. And there we go. I am very pleased. 
Very pleased indeed. So, where are we? I've got quite a bit of cleaning still to do, which I'm going to do next. I think uh, in terms of restoration electronically, it's done. I'll do a quick check of the alignment at the end, but I definitely have to tackle the uh, cleanup. Because I then, of course, will have the cabinet. And another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add Bluetooth. Make this much, much more useful. Just a comment on the Bluetooth. I, um, I've come across some pretty strong opinions for and against, especially against, actually, um, where I've been accused of uh, bastardizing the original and uh, really not using the radio as it should be. As far as I'm concerned, that's not based on fact. This thing was built with a pickup input, and the pickup input certainly doesn't use the radio. I say this because one of the comments was, if you add Bluetooth, you only use about 15% of the radio. You might as well get a, a boombox. But the point is, it, had a, it has a pickup input, that's what the Bluetooth goes into. And the advantage is uh, you end up benefiting from the sound, the quality of the sound that the tube amplifier gives you. And basically, all you're doing is putting a Bluetooth receiver as opposed to a gramophone. Yep, it's more modern, but hey, it's also more in use. And um, I certainly prefer these things to be used rather than sit on a shelf. This doesn't have... Uh, FM, if it did, it, I suppose you could argue that it would still get used, and it does. FM sound on these things is amazing when it does have FM. It doesn't have FM, so I give it Bluetooth, and these things get used by various generations, especially the younger generations. I think it's a pretty, pretty nice uh, way to put this thing to use. So... I'm going to continue to put Bluetooth if it offends anybody. I'm sorry about that, but uh, yeah, my restoration, my rules. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll come back later with, uh, well, I'll come back in the near future with um, the final video, which will be the restoration of the cabinet and the cleaning and the final testing and alignment and so on. I've uh, certainly had a, a rather unexpected experience here. Two, two swap outs. Fortunately, the parts radio came in very useful, and um, I never throw these away. Look at that grime. Bloody hell. Wish I could put this in the washing machine. <laughs> and um, once again, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. The link's at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.